Hello everybody. In the previous video exercise we demonstrated how to program multi-column layouts for divs of different heights using core JavaScript. In this lesson we're going to use the CSS3 multi-column layout module and some of its properties to create multi-column layouts with automatic content spillover feature. Now both the JavaScript and the CSS approaches have different behavior and different benefits. First let's take a look at the finished product. What happens is each div can have different dynamic heights but it still forms a nice grid of sorts. And what happens is content spills over into the next columns if there happens to be spillover content. So you can just stack as many elements that you want inside of your multi-column layout container and they'll form this nice multi-column grid that can support divs of different heights. Your, your divs can also be all the exact same height if you want. It's just a new way to get columns in CSS, but it also comes with this automatic content spillover feature. Okay, we're going to start with some existing basic CSS and HTML that you might have on your page. And let's take a look at what it renders. You can see we just have a lot of divs on the page in the normal fashion. And each one has a different height because there's a different amount of sentences being written into each of those. So each is going to have its own different dynamic height. So this is what it looks like before we apply the CSS3 multi-column layout. It's just the normal way the divs stack on a page. Now we'll apply the few lines of code needed to create the multi-column layout. Okay, now I'm going to go in and apply the two lines needed to create the multi-column layout. And keep in mind that these have to be prefixed because they're new CSS3 properties. So you'd have to put WebKit right here, just for now, if you want it to work in all WebKit-based browsers. But I'll put all of those on at the end for you. I'll put the WebKit and the Mose prefix. And for now, you can test this in Internet Explorer. That's what I'm testing in here. Now let me refresh my page. Now you can see that just those two lines render the whole layout. And if I wanted that to be two columns, I'll just change that to a two. Refresh my page and take a look. Now I have two column layout. And these can all be dynamic percentages. For instance, this container can be 100%. And now you see that you have a full width column layout. Now I'm only going to show these two properties because really that's all that's needed to render the effect that I want. But I'm giving you this URL. And this is the URL that educators like myself use to research the source material from the horse's mouth. So you can go straight to the source material and learn really all about the CSS multi-column layout in depth. And there's more properties that you can investigate for it. Now this column rule is what you see in the middle. See this vertical rule? It's like a horizontal rule, like a horizontal line, but it's just a vertical line. So it's a vertical rule in between your columns. So if I put that back on three and I refresh, I'm going to see that rule in between and you can remove that you don't even need that in place refresh and it's gone but I'll just leave it in place for now and like I said you can discover a whole lot more that a lot of tutorial websites aren't going to talk to you about if you just go to this URL yourself and I'll put a link in the video description to this URL and I'll also put a link to all of this code here in my document and if you're wondering how I'm getting these sentences to write dynamically into all these divs for my dummy content, I'm just writing it in using these two lines, I'm using this line, and then a for loop. Okay, so that's about it. That's really all you need to know. You can discover a whole lot more yourself if you take the time to read that whole page.